This lecture is part of a Udemy course entitled Design of Wastewater Treatment Plants for On-Site Projects. You will learn how to fully design a treatment plant for small to medium scale projects. You can find an 80% discount promo link in the description box. Hello everyone and welcome back to this new MBBR design series. In this lecture, we will be studying the pre-anoxic denitrification system. So we have already uh, posted a lecture about uh, MBBR in general, the uh, different uh, processes and uh, stages that are involved in this technology. Also, uh, I have posted a, a design lecture about how to design a two-stage BODCOD removal, which is pretty much this configuration the design criteria as well as a deta detailed solved example and in this lecture we will study another configuration which is the pre-anoxic uh, denitrification system that will allow a, a high reduction of nitrogen within the wastewater of course along with a, a high reduction also of BOD and COD the organic matters in the pre-anoxic denitrification, we have three main reactors. We have the anoxic tank or the denitrification tank. As you can notice, we have the MBBR media, of course, in each reactor. So these are the media and we have uh, a mixer. As you can see, we don't have aeration. Denitrification happens in anaerobic conditions. So no air uh, diffusion, or only a mixer. Then we have a, a BOD removal tank. So the MBBR media and we have air uh, injection. So we have aerobic conditions there. And we have the nitrification tank. Also, uh, we need MBBR media and aerobic conditions. So how does uh, this system work? First of all, we have the primary clarifier. So this is not really within the secondary treatment. We are uh, in the primary treatment and this is simply the uh, a, a sedimentation tank. So uh, this is where the solid particles will settle down by gravity and we will have a, a formation of a sludge, the primary sludge. And also in this phase, we have a, a reduction of around 30% of the BOD. So we still have 70% of BOD. So we still have a carbon source that will be entering the anoxic tank or the denitrification tank. And we need this carbon source for the denitrification reaction. During the denitrification phase, what will happen is actually the conversion of the nitrate into nitrogen gas, thus the removal of uh, uh, nitrates. But we still don't have nitrates in this stage. Nitrates are uh, actually formed in the nitrification phase where ammonia is actually converted in nitrate. So ammonia is converted into nitrate, which is the uh, NO3. And we need aerobic conditions so that we have the formation of nitrates. This is why we still don't have nitrates in this phase. Then part of uh, uh, this wastewater is recycled into the anoxic tank. So notice we have NO3 recycling and in, is injected into the anoxic tank. So we have the elimination of the nitrates into nitrogen gas. So in the pre-anoxic denitrification, when we say pre-anoxic, notice that the anoxic tank comes as a first stage. It comes before the nitrification for the purpose of having a, a carbon source from the primary clarifier. If we move this anoxic tank after the BOD removal tank, we will be missing the uh, BOD component and we would not have a carbon source and no denitrification. So to sum up, to summarize uh, 
the info that I have already stated. So we have first of all the primary clarifier. We have a little bit of reduction of BOD. Then we have the anoxic tank. So we have a carbon source plus the uh, nitrate that is being recycled from the nitrification tank. Within the anoxic tank, we have the removal of nitrate. Then we have the BOD removal. So we have the high reduction of BOD, which is very essential then we have the nitrification tank this is where we have the formation of nitrate uh, in aerobic conditions finally we have the secondary clarifier so this is where another time we have a uh, settling of the secondary sludge then the water is clarified and it can undergo a tertiary treatment which is usually uh, disinfection now let's see how to size these three reactors, the anoxic tank, the BOD tank, and the nitrification tank. We will go step by step. First of all, for the anoxic tank, we need to get the nitrates loading rate, which is usually the flow rate, so the Q, how much water we are treating in meter cubes per day times the NO3 and concentration or the nitrogen, the nitrates nitrogen uh, concentration in milligrams per liter. And we can get the nitrates loading rate in grams per day. So this is how much we need to remove nitrates in grams per day. Then we can find the carrier surface area. So we have already said uh, and mentioned in the previous lectures that we have actually the MBBR media, the carrier uh, media. And now we need to get the uh, surface area of these carriers in meter square. So the NO3N loading rate, so the value that we have already found in grams per day, divided by the surface area loading rate, the SALR, we have already uh, defined and explained the importance of uh, this SALR value and we have here a table where we can choose uh, this value based on the treatment uh, target percentage removal. So if we need to remove around 70% of nitrates, we would choose a value of 0.9 and if we need to reach higher reduction, uh, uh, we have higher uh, targets, we have a higher uh, removal target, we would choose a value of two. These values are based on uh, experiments. Uh, these are based on published papers uh, about the MBBR technology. So when we choose uh, this value based on, the, uh, uh, on our uh, target, removal target, we can get the carrier surface area. Then we can find the media volume. So how much media we need to add to the anoxic tank. So how much media we will be filling in this anoxic tank. So this is the carrier surface area in meter square divided by the media specific surface in meter square per meter cube. And also we have already said that we get this value from the manufacturer. So you choose a manufacturer, you get the catalog, you choose, let's say here we chose the K3 model and the media specific surface is 500. So in this case, our value would be 500 and we have already found the carrier surface area so we can easily get the media volume that we need to fill within the anoxic tank. Finally, we can find the volume of the tank. So V of the tank, which is equal to the media volume over the fill fraction. The fill fraction is usually between 30 to 70%. If you choose a low value, so let's say a 30%, this would be an advantage. Of course, you will have a higher volume. The tank will be bigger, so it will be more costly. But the advantage is that Later on, if you have higher loads, if you have a, a higher um, quantity of water that uh, needs to be treated, you have the possibility to add extra media. But if you have a restricted budget, just go for a, a higher value. And always keep in your mind that we need a free board. So we need a, a distance, keep a free distance between the maximum uh, height of water and the top of the tank. So it would be at least 0.35 meters. That must be taken into consideration. Next, we have the BOD removal tank. So we will see how to size this BOD uh, removal tank. We have practically the same steps. 
first we need to find the BOD loading rate and uh, grams per day the same it is equal to the flow rate the Q the quantity of water that is being treated per day times the BOD concentration that uh, we need to remove taking into consideration that around 30% of the BOD was removed in the primary uh, treatment tank so we can get the amount of BOD that needs to be removed per day. Then we can find the carrier surface area in meter square, which is equal to the BOD loading rate over the SALR. Here we have different values for the SALR also based on this table. So depending on the uh, target and the percentage uh, removal that uh, we need to reach so if it is between 75 to 80 percent 80 percent reduction of BOD choose a, an SALR value of 25 to reach 85 to 90 percent removal choose 15 and if you want to reach higher removal rates up to 95 percent you can choose 7.5 of course notice that the lower the values the higher the carrier surface area so so the higher the volume of media that we need to get so of course the higher the cost we have a better performance but we have a, a costly uh, treatment system then we can get the media volume the carrier surface area divided by the media specific surface so the same logic the same concept and finally we can get the volume of tank which is equal to the media volume so the value that we have found divided by the fill fraction so as we have already said between 30 to 70 percent and don't forget the freeport finally we can size the nitrification tank the same logic get the ammonia nitrogen loading rate which is the flow rate times the nh3n concentration then the carrier surface area which is nh3n loading rate divided by the sl SALR value also here we have a third table if we are allowed to have an uh, effluent NH3M higher than 3 milligrams per liter you can choose an SALR of 1 and if you want to, to reach a value less than 3 milligrams per liter uh, choose a value of 0.45 and then you can get the carrier surface area then we can get the media volume we divide the carrier surface area by the media specific surface then the volume of the tank we get it by dividing the media volume by the fill fraction finally we can design the secondary clarifier so this clarifier that comes after the uh, these uh, three reactors the volume is based on the hydraulic retention time so the water needs to sit in this a clarifier between 3 to 10 hours so we, we can get easily the volume by multiplying the HRT so you need to assume a, a value between 3 to 10 hours and you multiply it by the flow uh, converting the flow into hours of course here the also the same idea the same logic the higher the retention time the better is the quality of the effluent but the bigger is the clarifier so we have a higher cost always we have to do the balance between having a, a good effluent quality and also uh, stay within the uh, budget this is all for this lecture please don't forget to like and subscribe and keep following us for extra and more videos about water and wastewater designs.